Hey guys, we're going to be checking out the performance of GTA San Andreas on the Nexus 7 2013 here. In terms of the software I'm running, this is stock ROM and stock kernel. I'm running the FPS meter down at the bottom here and I'm running system monitor up at the top to check out what the CPU cores are doing. Now I'm going to do this in the same format I did as my Nexus 5 review. We're going to be trying this on the absolute maximum settings first and then we'll go down to the defaults and then we'll do a mixture of the two. So you can see right now it's set to the absolute maximum heavy frame limiter off. And the detailed settings, everything is set to max, resolution is max, draw distance 100%, it's all there. So yeah, we'll start this game again and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Now don't forget, 30 frames per second is basically the max frame rate we can hope for here. Even with the frame limiter off, that's what Rockstar have set this game to. You can see at a standstill on maximum settings, the Nexus 7 is kind of struggling here. It's already around 20 frames per second. So let's just move around a bit, see what happens. Wow, okay, so when you start to get to the road, you can see it's just dropping significantly. 12 frames per second, a minimum of 10 here, a minimum of 8 now. And if we just pan around, you can see this is the definition of unplayable right here. It is a slideshow. So, um, yeah, not doing very well here at all on absolute maximum. Let's uh, see if we can actually get into a car. Can we get into a car? We can, but you can just see here how horrible this really is. It's uh, it's definitely struggling. You can see the CPU cores in the top left-hand corner. It's, again, only using two of them. Let's see if we can drive out of this bit. You can just see 13 frames per second, 18. Once you get out of the uh, area where there's loads of cars, the frame rate does increase a little bit, but that's not really going to help you because... When stuff starts to get a little bit hectic, when you've got a few cops on you, it's going to basically become unplayable. There's really no point in me testing these max settings any further because you can see it's just struggling pretty, pretty heavily here. So I just wanted to check out some of the GPU stats on the absolute maximum settings here. You can see the load at 100%, the frequency at 400 megahertz, and that is the maximum frequency you can achieve here. Uh, it's just stressing it out way too much. You can see the load being 99, 100%. GPU is working at full load and it's still struggling. So these settings are just a step too far for the Nexus 7 2013 here. Okay, so jumping back into the graphics menu here, we're going to hit restore defaults and check out the performance here. Now, these settings are actually identical to the restore defaults of the Nexus 5, even though the Nexus 5 has a stronger CPU and GPU. So I'm not sure this is actually looking at the hardware at all. I think it's just defaults for Android in general. So yeah, let's see how it does. Okay, so we've started the game again just to see how it handles the same scenario. And if you remember, but on maximum settings when I was just standing here doing nothing the frame rate was already down to 19 to 20 FPS it's already up into the 30s so it's a it's a lot better already let's run into the street and see how it handles this scenario because before this was an absolute slideshow so when the cars pile up you can see the frame rate does drop again but it's a lot better than it was it hasn't dropped anywhere near to the amount that it did on maximum settings I can pan around it's a lot more uh, well it's absolutely playable now whereas before it just wasn't playable at all We'll dive into a car here. Jump in. Analog. So yeah, again, the frame rate is just a lot higher. Now, obviously, you have lost quite a bit in terms of resolution and visual quality. The resolution is now down to 50%, and I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera, but that is definitely noticeable in real life. It's just not quite as sharp. Visual quality as well has also been put down to medium from maximum, and yeah, the game just doesn't look quite as good. But what you've got in comparison to that is just a lot higher frames per second, and it's actually playable. Maximum settings was just unplayable completely. It just wasn't even worth checking out. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I've been driving around for about a minute now, and you can see the minimum is 23, the average is 31, the maximum is 37. Uh, so it's not doing too badly here. If you go through an absolute really built-up area and you've got a lot of cops on you and stuff like that, the frame rate will still drop into the teens. I have seen that. We'll drive into this cop here, see if we can uh, get some action going on. Come on, cops. Here we go. So there's a fair few cars on the road now. I've got a few cops on me. Stuff's starting to get a little bit more hectic. I'm trying to kill this cop here, but I'm failing badly. Minimum is now 20. We now have two cops on me. So on maximum settings, this would be probably like 5 FPS. It would struggle horribly. 
but the minimum it's dropped to here is 20, so it's a lot better. It's a lot more playable at least. Um, yes, you've taken a big hit, but it's worth it if you can actually play the game. So checking out the GPU stats for this graphics setting, you'll see the GPU load has decreased. It's around 70 to 80% now, although when you go into a high built-up area, you'll see it still jumps into the 90s. So uh, even though it has decreased, it's still pretty damn high for this graphic setting. And what that basically tells me is the Adreno 320 is still under heavy load even at these graphic settings. In comparison, when I actually used these settings on my Nexus 5, the load dropped to around 60 to 70%, and it didn't really increase off that, so it just shows you how much stronger that Adreno 330 is. You'll also see the frequency is locked in at 400MHz, whereas on the Nexus 5 it was fluctuating down because it could handle it without a problem. So, what this essentially tells me is the Adreno 320 GPU, you can see the load being 99% here, is still being pretty damn stressed even at these mediocre settings. So I've done a little bit of tinkering with the graphics settings and really I found that I couldn't really change them too much off what the restored defaults were saying. The resolution I've bumped up to around 80%, I've put the draw distance down to 41, I've turned the shadows to classic and I've turned car reflections off. So it's not much of an increase there but I do think the game looks better. So let's test these out. Okay, so what I didn't show you is I also changed the traffic mode to light to see if that helps the performance. And straight away, the game just looks better to me thanks to that 80% resolution. It's just a hell of a lot sharper and it looks great on a display that the Nexus 7 2013 has. Let's see if there's any major decrease in performance. Go into this uh, hectic area where the cars are at. So definitely not as many cars on the road here, you can see that. And it dropped to, don't take into consideration that 9, that's that's a lie, that was just when it was loading. I think it dropped to around 23 FPS here, which uh, isn't bad at all. A few more cars now. But yeah, not bad, you can see a minimum there of 23, we'll, we'll jump in a car and see what happens. So while driving around, there's definitely a noticeable difference in the amount of cars on the road when you use the light traffic mode. It's uh, pretty evident, there's hardly any actually right here. And that's definitely helping the performance, so I'm not going to tinker around with this anymore, but if you set it to light, you may be able to even get a little bit more out of the resolution, maybe a little bit more out of the draw distance, I'll let you guys uh, figure that one out for yourselves. And just lastly, we'll check out the GPU load while using my custom settings, and you can definitely see they've jumped back up to around that 1995 range, so uh, definitely a little bit more stress thanks to that added resolution. So yeah, there you go guys. Let me know what you think about the performance with the Nexus 7 2013. Let me know if you find out any epic settings that make it buttery smooth and still look pretty good. Yeah, peace out.